Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in Visual Basic. Now what if you would like to be able to assign a bunch of different pieces of information to one variable? For an example, what if you wanted to access all the different colors of the rainbow? Well you wouldn't want to have to create a variable for every single color, right? What if you could just create one variable called colors and then you know assign every color to that one variable? Well that's where arrays come into play. So let's figure out how to create one. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a list box, move that on there, I'll call it LST colors, and let's create a button, a couple buttons actually, so one button, I'll copy and paste it. So one will be the colors button, so btn colors, and I'll call the other one colors. Uh, and for the second button, that will just be our clear so that we can clear the list. And let's see here. Whoops. There we go. So let's work with the clear first. So then we go list. There we go. Dot item. Whoops. Yeah, items. Dot clear. Whoops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. That's simple and go back up here let's go to colors here and figure out how to create an array okay so in order to create array just create a variable as you normally would I'll call it colors with some parentheses as the data type as that you want to give it now inside here goes the highest uh, index number inside uh, your array so since index numbers always start with zero so if you want six elements, such as the six main colors of the rainbow, you'd only put in one less than that. Whoa. Five. <laughs> Whoops. Then below this, we can actually assign each individual color. So I'll go colors. Zero is equal to... Then I'll throw in red. Then colors. Orange. Oh, see, I already messed this up. Okay, so I'm just going to copy paste orange paste yellow paste and let's see green paste blue and paste purple there we go then each of these will be the next number and there we go now we have all of our elements now how do we get them printed on our little list box here what we can do is just create a simple for loop. So I'll type out for and, whoops, got to create a little increment here, i as integer, and make sure it resets to zero every time it, we go back into this, into this uh, subroutine. So i is equal to zero here, and how far do we want to go? Till the fifth element, of course. So then throw out list colors dot items dot add, and then inside there we want to add each element of the array. So type out colors and then I. So I will keep going up every time. So I click save. Whoops. Uh, let's see here. I. Oh, did I not call that I? There we go. Click colors and there's all our colors. You can click it again, keep adding them, clear the whole list. And I actually want to make my, our box a little bit bigger. There we go. Uh, now there's actually a different way you can go about. Now you could use a loop, for an example, like in here, to add all the elements in there individually if you'd like. But if they're going to be constant like this, if you know they're always going to be the same, what you can do is next to your array, put an equal sign, some curly braces, then list them all off in here. And yes, they can be numbers as well, as long as it's not a string data type. So red, then orange. Whoop! Yeah, there we go. yellow, green, blue, and purple. And when you do that, it knows exactly how many elements are in there, so you, not, you do not need to tell it how many elements are in there. So just keep it blank, and if you click save, and then run this, it should still work the same way. And it does. Now there's actually a different kind of loop that's 
specifically meant for cases such as this using arrays and that's the for each loop so I top out for each loop and now I'm gonna get rid of this now the for each loop the syntax for this is you type in for each and then whatever variable you want to call it so I don't know I'll call it colors array and then the data type that you're using so these are all strings uh, so basically it's the same data type as the array itself and then after that in whichever array you created so mine's just colors and then in order to add the items you just type out list list colors such as this dot items dot add and then inside this goes this guy this kinda acts like your increment this is your increment that goes up each time even though it's not really but it does it goes on to each element in here and it'll print it for you So type out colors array and this guy should work I click colors and there you go see it still works so the for each loop is really nice I'm not quite sure if it's less space but it's nice now what if we would like to sort it or maybe reverse the array well, let's create some buttons and figure out how to do that so one button here I'll copy this and I'll paste it here okay so then this will be btn sort so that's an alphabetized and then here this I'll just call it sort then this will be reverse and then way up here I'll call it btn reverse That was terrible. There we go. So inside the sort, what we can do here is, and you know what? Uh, in order, so I don't have to keep printing out these elements again and again. I could actually just put it up here. So, nah, I'll just keep it there. Uh, you know, I'll just copy it. I won't work with different, uh, vi uh, different variable levels. I'll just I'll just uh, copy the whole thing over here again. So v, and I should probably do list colors dot items dot clear, just in case, just in case there's any in there. So I'll just have it in there for whatever. And then in order to access different methods inside the array, just type array itself, followed by a dot, and then all these different things you want to use. So I'm just going to use the sort, and then the reverse later. So I'll use sort, and then inside there goes the array, so colors. So sort, or I'll type out array.sort, and then inside there, um, name of array, sorts array elements alphabetically. Uh, I think I spelled everything correctly there. Okay, so then let's just copy and paste this for each loop right here. Bear in mind that once you do this, uh, it will not be undone. So just so you know, if if you did this, once you uh, alphabetize it, it's alphabetized for good. So I click uh, colors, for example, we have them all there. I click reverse, and, oh, not reverse, sort, and now they're alphabetized. So B, G, O, P, R, I don't, I don't know why red is there. That's very interesting that it's there. Oh, whoops. I'll just, uh... That's odd. It's the only one that's, uh... Oh, wait, no, yeah, R is there. Don't even know my alphabets. That is terrible, isn't it? Okay, then reverse. And reverse will pretty much work the same way. So I'll just copy all of this code right here, copy it, and then I'll paste it here. And now we're doing reverse. Okay, uh, reverses the order of array elements. And right here, we want to type in reverse instead. And again, when you do this, it does not go back to normal. However, if you do hit reverse twice, it will go back to normal because, well, it's going to reverse what's reversed. So if I throw in reverse, now they're all backwards. Uh, I hit it again. And, whoops. I did not clear it, so. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. 
So that's really, really, really nice. So no matter what you do, it pretty much works out. And uh, do I have time to show you another example? Uh, I think I do. I'll show you an example up here how to use a loop in order to throw in your own elements. So let's actually create our own array. So dim, and what should we call it? We should call it names. I don't know. As string. And how many do we want them? How many do you want to? We can put in our own, specify how many we want to put in, but I'll just call it three. Because we're going to have to do a bunch of conversions, anyways. And let's see here. So we're going to have to create some new variables for each name now, actually. Uh, because we have to convert them. Actually, no, they're going to be strings automatically. I'm thinking of numbers. So that's really, really nice to be working with numbers instead. So we can just create a loop now, actually. So four, and now I have to create the i. Keep forgetting about the i as integer is equal to zero. And for i is equal to zero, two, and then we're going to go all the way to the third element. And names. And then it will be i is equal to input box dot, or excuse me, so enter a name and have it say names and the default value would be just zero it's basically nothing in there and then we will want to create a for each loop that will go through each of the elements that well that we would like so for each and then let's just call it name array as string in and then names and then we'll throw out lists colors dot and then items dot add and then we'll add name array so I click save and I run this application and so this is the colors right so let's throw in I don't know my name Adam oh I have my caps lock on uh, let's throw in, uh, I don't know, Aaron. And what else should we throw in? Bob. These are terrible names. And one more. Eric with a K. There you go. And then they were all printed in the order that we did that. So that's our two little loops that we did. One for putting in the information and the other one for printing them. So that's really, really nice. And, of course, we could always put in one more input, input box that could say something like type in the number... Uh, we could actually do that. We actually have time. Uh, dim students as integer and then dim students conf as integer and this one will actually have to be string and let's see here. So so let's see here. So students will be equal to input box. How many students do you have? Followed by input required for the title. And then we'll have to convert that. So students con. Whoops will be equal to c int and then students and oh man I'm almost out of time then in here we'll throw in students con uh, and then zero through students con uh, well I have to change that number so we did four so if you typed in three four um, I might actually have to mess with that number. And then students conf. Actually, no, I won't. I, this is still going to be I. What am I talking about? And I think that should work. So I click uh, save, run this. Colors, how many students do you have? Let's say three. So Adam, Bob, Eric, and I don't know, Lamb. Okay, so it's one more. 
So, uh, students cons minus one. Always remember that. Throw in the minus one in there, so it's only that number that you put in there. And that's it for this tutorial. And uh, I hope this was useful to you. Uh, not so, not too much, but uh, uh, I thought it worked out pretty well. And I'll see you next time.